Okay. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our class on the Minister's Foundation. Um, uh, just so glad that all of you could uh, join the class this morning. Uh, before we begin, uh, can we just pause for a word of prayer? So can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Nobody wants to pray? Can someone unmute your mics and lead us in prayer, please? Sonia, can you lead us in prayer? Sonia Paul? Yes, yes, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Loving Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We want to thank and praise you for this day, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us to come together and learn more about your word. We thank you, Lord, my God, that uh, you are present here. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you enlighten our minds, Lord, and open our understanding. We thank and praise you, Lord, for Pastor Selena. We thank and praise you for the gift of teaching that you have blessed her with, Lord. We pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would empower her this morning for another powerful session, Lord. We thank and praise you, and we commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, Sonia Paul. Uh, so we are looking at uh, the guidepost, the nine guideposts that will help us to understand or discern uh, God's plan and purpose for our lives. So we looked at uh, three of them. Uh, the first one was, you know, a, a way that we can understand God's plan and purpose for our lives is through the instruction in God's word. Then we uh, looked at how we need to recognize the seeds in our life. Uh, the third thing is the steering within. And the fourth that we began looking uh, last week was the grace of God. Okay, so we'll continue looking at um, uh, the grace of God and which enables us to understand how we can know God's calling and how we can fulfill his plan and purpose uh, for our lives. Okay, so what is the meaning of grace? Um, in the New Testament, grace signifies three things. What are the three things? Anyone knows? The word grace in the New Testament signifies three things. Thank you, Lucy. Divine favor, di divine enablement, divine and divine character. character. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lucy and Gertrude. So uh, the, uh, the word grace in uh, the New Testament signifies divine favor, divine enablement, and divine um, character. And we saw that God has given every believer the grace um, and to each one grace is given according to the measure of Christ's gift and we also learned that there are different measures of the same gift so for example if uh, you know all of us some of us are called into writing or leading worship or being leaders you know, each one of us are given different measures of the same gift that God has called us to. And this is not that uh, because God shows partiality or favoritism. It's because uh, depending on the responsibility that we have, the, the level of responsibility that uh, God has called us to, uh, to the extent he increases the uh, measure. But we need to know that even though He, we all... Uh, in the same category of gifts that we have, we are given different measures. Uh, we need to understand that the measure Christ gives us is more than sufficient for us to fulfill the calling and the purpose for our lives, uh, which means that we look uh, at our own lives and not at other people's lives and feel jealous about them. So if you are a writer or a worship leader or, you know, basically a leader per se, uh, you know, in whichever area, then you don't look at other leaders and jealous of them because of the level of, um, you know, grace that God has uh, enabled them, uh, has given them. But we need to just be content knowing that God has given the measure of grace that we need to fulfill the calling and the function that he has bestowed upon our lives. 
we also saw that even though we are one body in Christ Jesus, that we are all different members, if we are many members, though we are part of one body. And we also saw that all of us as members in Christ's body do not have the same function, which means all of us are not called to preach. All of us are not called to be missionaries or apostles. We have all given different, different functions in the body of Christ. Some of us are called to be preachers, some teachers, some apostles, prophets. Uh, some of us are called to be helpers, administrators, you know, uh, counselors, writers, uh, whatever. We all have different functions and, uh, uh, you know, we are all needed in the body of Christ. Even as we fulfill the functions together, we are interlinked and intertwined and we need each other. Uh, to uh, help, you know, uh, run the whole body of Christ or the, or the smooth functioning of the entire body of Christ. And the gifts that God has given us or the talents, the skills that he has uh, uh, given us, it, uh, it helps us to fulfill the function that God has called us to. So if your uh, function is to be a youth pastor, then maybe you have the skills or the gifts that is required to uh, you know, fulfill the function of ministering to teenagers or to youth. Or if you are called to be um, a, a, a pastor, then, you know, to fulfill that function, God gives you the gifts that enables you to fulfill your function as a pastor. Or if you're called to be a, a teacher or a chef or a pilot, then God gives you the gifts um, that you need to fulfill your function. Now, when we say that God uh, gives us the gifts to fulfill our function, we need to remember that, you know, our function is not just in the body of Christ, but also we are called to, uh, you know, work in, in this world. So we have uh, different functions. Some of us can be teachers in schools, lecturers, chefs, uh, doctors, engineers, um, you know, whatever we are called. So it uh, we're not talking about just spiritual functions, but, you know, God has also called us to function in this world. And he gives us the gifts to, you know, fulfill that function. But even as he has given us those gifts and they are not, uh, the functions are not spiritual in nature, but yet we are called because we are part of the kingdom of God to bring in kingdom values, kingdom ethics, kingdom uh, principles in the workplace wherever God has placed us where whatever function that he has uh, given us okay so this is a kind of brief background or recap of what we did uh, last week we'll continue on with the same um, uh, uh, guide post that is to recognize um, the grace of God given to you so now you can ask this question how do we discover the gifts that are in us how do we know you know what is the gifts that God has given to us so one way uh, we can discover our gifts is to experiment try out things you know uh, for example um, I love music, I love singing, I love worshipping God, so I tried, uh, you know, learning the guitar, though I sing well, I, you know, uh, I tried learning the guitar, but I realized that, you know, I was not musically inclined, it took me a lot of effort, and I was just not moving past, um, and I could just see some people who don't even go for uh, music classes, you know, they just uh, take hold of a guitar, just learn some chords and you know they they they're just gifted in that area just to just, just play so i tried it out for more than a year and i i just realized that you know my uh, my gifting is not in that area so you know you can experiment this way try out different things and if your heart is in it you really enjoy it and you're doing well then maybe your gifting is in that area but if you're not able to make much progress then you can try something Else. So one way you can discover your gifts is experiment, try it out. I've also seen people who say, hey, I don't think I can teach children. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I don't think I can minister to children or be part of children's ministry. I always tell them, you pray about it, you sense a leading, you know, just come and uh, try, you know, just be um, a co-teacher and see how it works and you know many of them have told me uh, after you know just experimenting and trying they said you know we never knew that we had a gifting to teach children a calling to teach children and we're just enjoying it 
but some of them have said no i tried it out and i really don't think i see myself uh, fit okay uh, sunny moses uh, the notes are uh, the pdf copy of the notes are posted in the google uh, classroom so you can go and click uh, uh, the pdf copy and you can access it over there um, if you don't um, uh, I cannot access it, access it on the Google uh, in the Google Classroom. Then you can go to uh, apcwo.org and go to uh, um, uh, publications and English publications, and you will find this book, uh, "Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life." But if you are following uh, uh, those of you who are following the notes in the in the publication, uh, you would notice that there is a lot of extra content that I'm giving you. So you will have to just basically write down those. Uh, John Blessy, can you please unmute? Thank you. So a uh, lot of what I'm saying is not there in the publication. These are extra uh, notes that I'm giving you. So you can just follow and you can uh, make your own notes. I hope that's OK, Sunny Moses. Uh, we'll move on. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sam Daniel. That's, uh, that's really helpful. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so uh, all of these things, what I'm saying is extra notes, which you will not find in the publications, so which you just have to uh, write down, or maybe you can uh, uh, access the, uh, the, the video uh, uh, of this lecture, which will be posted in the Google Classroom after by the end of today or by 5 p.m. Uh, today. OK, uh, so we'll move on. Uh, so the first thing you can do to discover your gifts that God has given is to experiment. The second thing is sometimes God can use a prophetic word uh, to help us find the hidden gifts that are uh, in us. Uh, you know, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, Paul tells Timothy, stir up the gifts that is in you, which is given to you by prophecy and to the laying on of hands. Uh, so sometimes a prophetic word, uh, sometimes people can identify or see that gifts in you uh, or God. Uh, we will also look at how God uh, orchestrates uh, circumstance, circumstance, uh, circumstances and situations in our life, which will help us to identify our gifts. Uh, but here we also, uh, another way that, you know, God can, um, that we can help discover the gifts that uh, God has placed in our lives is through a prophetic word. But we need to understand that while prophet prophecy reveals potential, sometimes a prophetic word can also lead us astray. Okay, so we need to be very careful. Uh, uh, you know, if we receive a prophetic word, we just don't jump into it and dive into it and do the what is required, uh, dive into uh, action mode. But we pray, we wait on the Lord, we also um, go back to the word of God, which is our standard, and see if um, that is in alignment with God wants wants us to do so for example you know if um, just say uh, johnny you know gets a prophetic word from someone and says that you know hey johnny this, uh, the lord is telling me that you're going to start uh, or you're going to get into restaurant business okay so johnny is very excited he gives up his job immediately he goes to the bank he takes a five lakh loan and he opens um, a restaurant and then you know probably uh, uh, you know one month down the line or two months down the line he's probably the only customer and he he's the only one who has to eat his own uh, food on the in the menu card okay uh, so uh, what did johnny do wrong yes he got a prophecy but you know, um, uh, uh, the word of God says in First Thessalonians 5 verses 20 and 21 that we should not despise prophecy but test all things. So if you receive a prophetic word, it should be uh, tested. Okay. So before uh, Johnny could jump into a restaurant business, he should have tested the prophetic word and, uh, you know, he should have waited for a sign from God, the Holy Spirit prompting him speaking to him or the word of God leading him to do things, uh, just receiving uh, discernment and uh, God's uh, knowing when is God's timing, uh, what to do, how to go about starting it. Uh, but if you don't receive any sign after you've prayed and waited on the Lord uh, and, you know, just shelf that uh, prophetic word 
for some time which means just wait uh, and time will be a good test to see whether the prophetic word is a true word or uh, not okay so these are some of the things that you could do to you know discover the gifts of course you also know the steering in your heart uh, the seeds that god puts in you we would also look at uh, another guidepost uh, recognize the circumstances that god orchestrates in your life so uh, even through those things we know the gifts of god in um, us okay now let's look at ephesians chapter 3 verses uh uh, 1, 7, and 8. Can somebody quickly read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1, 7, and 8 for us, please? For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, whereby when ye eat, ye may understand my knowledge in mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made unto the sons of uh, men. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, can you please read only verse 1 and verse 7 and verse 8, please? Thank you. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ of Gentiles, verse 7, Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the essential working of his power. Verse 8. Unto me, who I am less than the least of saints, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. So here in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 7 and 8, we learn some important things. Paul says he becomes, he has become a minister uh, of Christ Jesus. So how does, how has he become a minister? He says, according to the gift of grace of God that is given to him. Okay, that's verse 7. He says, Paul says, I became a minister. And how did he become a minister? According to the gift of the grace of God uh, given uh, to him. So what you and I become in life, whether we be, become a teacher, a preacher, a pastor, a businessman, is determined by the gift of the grace of God given to each one of us. So Paul says, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me and by the effective working of his power. Now we need to understand that, you know, our function and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and the gift of grace and the power of God are all connected, which means our function means what is God, what, uh, role or responsibility that God has called us to. Whether it's a function of being a pastor, a teacher, a preacher, a businessman, whatever, you know, um, your function also corresponds to the gift of grace and to the power of God. So your function, your gift of grace and the power of God are all connected. The power of God is going to flow in and through your life when you are in the place, in the function that God wants you to perform using the gifts that he has given you. Okay, so if, if you see that, you know, you're in a place where you're not experiencing the power of God, you're not experiencing the move of God, there is no progress, there is no growth, you're not doing well, then you need to really ask, are you in the right function? Okay, because if you are in the right place, in the right function that God wants you to perform using the gifts that he has given to you, then the power of God will be powerfully manifested, which means you will excel, you will be the head, you will not be the tail, there'll be growth, there'll be progress. Um, and of course, you know, it's not going to come very easily. There's going to be a lot of hard work and there's going to be a lot of challenges. There's going to be a lot of difficulties that is part of the calling, that is part of the function, but you will experience the power of God. But if you're not in line, you're not in the right place, you're not in your right function, you're not using uh, the gift of grace um, that is given to you, uh, you know, uh, then you uh, the power of God will not be operative in your 
life. Okay, so we must discover our gifts of grace because they define our function. And this is the area where God's power will flow through our life to make everything effective for his kingdom. And that is when, um, you know, life will be more meaningful and uh, purposeful. So, you know, just uh, giving you uh, an example, I was sharing last um, week how, you know, um, it, I didn't want to be full time uh, uh, in children's ministry. I wanted to do counseling with drug addicts and alcoholics. But when I realized that, you know, how God is orchestrating situations, circumstances, people in my life, uh, opening doors of opportunity, and uh, He's given me a love for children, uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, and a burden for them uh, and I got into the function of uh, being a, 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 a children's minister I realized that you know God was just enabling me with the skills that I needed of course when I was in Bible college we never had a course about children's ministry they never taught us how to minister to children effective tools child psychology uh, nothing but I just see over the years how God has uh, given me the skills, the talents, the creativity that I need um, uh, to run children's program, uh, the creative ideas. Uh, it's just a heavenly download, you know, that comes. Uh, and I just see the power of God just so beautifully uh, manifesting in and through the ministry that I am doing. And I'm so uh, grateful to God that, you know, he enabled me to be in the right place uh, uh, in, uh, get into the right function and to use my gifts and the skills that uh, the gifts that he has given me and of course he aids me with the skills and the power to uh, do what he has called me to uh, do okay we'll move on uh, verse 8 uh, Paul says um, that he is less than uh, the least of all the saints but the grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ so what do we understand from what Paul is saying in verse 8 of Ephesians chapter 3? He's saying that the grace of God is always given to you for something. Okay, so here he says it was given to him to do something. And what is that something that he should preach the gospel to the Gentiles? So the area in which God has given you the grace are also the areas in which you will find God's power working effectively in your life. While God has grace, uh, has uh, grace and gifted every believer, you know, there are some specific offices that he gives only for a few people. And that we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, uh, where we see that, you know, uh, Christ himself appoint specific function to specific people and those specific functions are uh, the function of an apostle a prophet an evangelist a pastor and a teacher the fivefold ministry offices that christ himself will specifically give you know as a function for specific people but uh, having said that we need to know that god has given all of us the measure of grace he has given, uh, he's also gifted each and every believer. He's also given us specific functions. He's also given us functions in the body of Christ. But there are specific offices or specific functions that God has given uh, to few people. And those are the fivefold ministry offices that of an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and a teacher. Okay. So just to sum, sum up this whole um, uh, guidepost on recognize the grace of God given to us, you know, uh, we need, uh, so all that we've been saying thus far is that we need to recognize the grace of God given to us. Your gift of grace reveals God's potential and his purpose for your life. The way that you are designed uh, reveals what you were designed for. And God's gift of grace needs to be nurtured, developed, and used to fulfill his uh, purpose. Okay. Now, we need to remember that, you know, because God has given us a grace in certain areas, it does not mean that life is going to be one whole happy joyride, a wonderful journey where we can just sit back and just press the grace button. Uh, no. 
look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Can somebody read that, please? But 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Sorry, yes, go ahead. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Amen. Thank you. So here we see that, you know, Paul says uh, he is what he is because of the grace of God. And he says that even though he has the grace of God, what has he done? He says he has labored more abundantly than ev anybody or everybody. Okay. So he says the grace of God was abundant in his life. But even though the grace of God is abundant in his life, he's, uh, he had to labor more abundantly than they all. And he says, yet not I, but the grace of God that is given to me. Okay, so what do we learn from this is there are going to be times when, you know, even though God has called us for a specific uh, ministry office or a specific function, we experience a, a greater measure of grace, we have the gifts, the skill, uh, you know, it, it's, it's also times when we have to sweat it out. There are times when we have to, you know, press through some difficult times. There are times when we've got to make some sacrifices. There are times when you might have to shed some tears. It's going to be difficult. There are times when you have to work harder and longer than other people, and you've got to labor harder. Uh, but, you know, the empowerment that uh, uh, God, uh, uh, but, you know, God empowers you uh, to labor, to work hard, and he gives you the uh, grace. So Paul says he labored even by the empowering of God. So God, which means God empowers us to labor, to work hard. Okay, so God does not just want us to sit back, you know, enjoy uh, the whole ride and just press the grace button. No, it says, Paul says, you know, he labored even by the empowering of God. That means God empowers us to labor, to work hard. So don't be afraid to, uh, to work hard. Don't be afraid of hard work. You need to uh, put in hard work and maximize the grace of God that is given to you. Okay. So that is the last point about grace plus uh, work. So this is about uh, the guidepost on recognizing the grace of God given to you. Uh, any questions on this before we move on to the next guidepost? Something. Yes, get rude. Uh, you know, I had a children's ministry. I had a, a word of God prophesied and it was confirmed. And I had it for like uh, five, six years. And then there was so many, so many problems uh, in management. And I couldn't travel personally. And then I stopped it. That means um, I didn't follow God's instructions. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Gertrude. It's not that you did not follow uh, 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 God's instructions. There are seasons in our life that God, that God takes us through. We look at that one of the guideposts is recognizing the times and seasons. So you need to recognize it, you know, that is the season that God wants you to uh, be there. Uh, that is what God wants you to do, continue doing. Uh, sometimes you can understand, uh, we will we will look at it. You know, we need to pray and ask God, God, is this the right season of life? This is the right place that I'm, uh, uh, that you want me to be here in this season of life? What is the next season of life? Prepare me for the next season of life. Um, so maybe God wants, uh, you know, to move you to some other children's ministry, some other area where they require your expertise, they require your skills, they require your talent, and you have done sufficient work here, maybe five years. Then you, when you understand that God is going to move you, you understand the times and seasons, then, you know, God will enable you to uh, raise up a leader, uh, to, you know, to raise up other people who can, 
take care of the work that you have begun here so that God can take you and move you to another place where, you know, God requires your skills, your talents, your expertise, your abilities so that he can uh, enhance or further uh, the progress in uh, some other place or, you know, start a new work. So I've seen that as a pattern in my life as well when, you know, um, before I joined APC and took over uh, the school outreach ministry, you know, um, uh, I was in a previous place where I was doing children's ministry and I had to move out of that place. But, you know, God raised up leaders. We had uh, written the curriculum. We had established the work. Uh, and, you know, the, it was it was in good hands. And so I could move out. And the, the work that we started still continues even today. And now I'm here in this place, you know, doing Catalyst. And um, I'm also praying and saying, God, I've been here for uh, a good number of years. What is the season of life I am in? What is the next season of life? What are you preparing me? You know, and God is showing me things. He's helping me to see things, discern things. So I'm working towards that. I'm praying towards that and I'm preparing uh, towards that. So I think it's important for you to uh, thank do you, that as thank well. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Gertrude. Yes, anyone else has any questions? OK, if there are no questions, then we'll move on to the next guidepost. Uh, the next guidepost is uh, to recognize the leading of God's spirit, uh, leading of the Holy Spirit. Another way that God communicates his plan and purpose to us is by uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals the plans and the purposes of God uh, to us. Uh, let's read Romans chapter 8, verses 14 uh, through 16. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Can somebody read that, please? So, as many have read by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen. Thank you. So here we see, uh, you know, um, that uh, as sons of God, as God's children, we have the privilege of being led by the uh, Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us. Uh, he, he will direct us. He will show us the way that we are supposed to go. And verse 16 says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit, uh, in your inner being, uh, in your spirit man, the Holy Spirit will uh, bear witness, uh, which means he's going to testify or he's going to speak. He's going to testify about the truth. He's going to tell you, hey, this is right. This is wrong. This is what you should be doing. This is not what you should be doing. So he will bear witness in your spirit um, man. So the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness in your spirit. And um, that way he's going to lead you into the plan of um, God. Okay. So in John chapter 16, uh, verses 13 to 15, we see that, you know, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide us into all truth, but he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he speaks, he, you know, uh, it says the Holy Spirit, we will hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So the Holy Spirit is going to uh, speak uh, to us, okay, as we read in um, John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. So can somebody read that, please? John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take off what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father are are mine. Therefore I said that he will take off mine and declare it to you. Amen. Uh, so Vivek Nanda says, is there any difference uh, between spirit and the Holy Spirit of God? 
uh, uh, yes, so, you know, uh, sorry, not to be vague, Wiki. Um, so Wiki, you know, in scripture, we see wherever there is a small s uh, uh, for the word spirit, it's referring to the spirit of man. So if you see a small s, it's referring in the scripture, it's referring to the spirit of man. But wherever you see a capital S for spirit, it's referring to the Holy Spirit. So there are some places where the Holy Spirit is mentioned. There are some places where the spirit of God is mentioned with a capital S, which is referring to the Holy Spirit. And there are, there are some places in scripture where there is just a spirit is mentioned with, if it's a capital S, it is referring to the Holy Spirit. And if it's a small S, then it is referring to the human spirit. Okay, does that help? Does that help, Vicky? Okay, so uh, we read in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, that the Holy Spirit is going to speak. And who is the Holy Spirit going to speak? He's going to speak to you and me. So when, you know, God reveals his plan and his purposes for us, or uh, we can say it uh, in this way uh, to, for us as human beings to understand, when God speaks his plans and purposes about our lives, the Holy Spirit hears it and the Holy Spirit is going to speak it to you and me, which means the Holy Spirit is going to reveal the plan and purposes of God to you and to uh, me. And um, uh, we read in John chapter 16, it says, you know, he will, the Holy Spirit will tell you things. He will show you things ahead of time. Isn't that wonderful? So you might be in one season of uh, of your life now, but the Holy Spirit is uh, willing or God is willing to reveal to you what is going to happen in the next season of your life. And why does God want to reveal what is going to happen in the next season of your life so that you can be prepared, you can plan, um, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally be prepared for the next season of your um, life. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, you know, he um, will tell you, he will show you things ahead of time. And how is he going to do it? He's going to bear witness in your spirit, uh, man. Now, for example, uh, you know, just take, for example, the Holy Spirit uh, bears witness in you that uh, you just sense in your spirit, or you just hear, or you just sense, it's just an impression, you know, uh, that there's going to be a change coming in your life in 2024. I'm just giving you an example. I'm not prophesying over all of us. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit just bears witness in your spirit and saying, hey, there's going to be a change coming in your life. And you just feel this. Okay. And then you're not very sure about it. So you begin praying about it. And then you ask God, you know, God, tell me, what is this change that I'm just uh, sensing in my spirit, man? What is it? And as you begin to pray, the Holy Spirit will clarify. And he say, and the Holy Spirit will say, you know, uh, you're going to get a new job. And in the new job, it's going to involve a lot of traveling. Okay. So here the Holy Spirit is telling you just... Um, minimal things but specific things he says you're going to get a new job and the new job entails you uh, for a lot of traveling so you know he's telling you ahead of time what is happening going to happen so you're going to prepare mentally emotionally be prepared get things ready think about your family your wife your children and um, lo and behold 2024 comes and you find yourself you know uh, into a new job and, uh, you know, just a week into your new job, your boss calls you and says, hey, you know, uh, I want you to travel to such and such a place and uh, your work job entails you to, uh, to do a little bit more of traveling. So you're OK with it. And then you are in a spirit man. You say, oh, thank you, God. Thank you for preparing me for this. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, ahead of time, uh, enable me to, you know, prepare emotionally, mentally for this new job and you're excited and you tell your boss yes and you're just flourishing in your uh, new job. So, you know, the Holy Spirit will tell you ahead of time because he wants you to prepare you for the next season of life. So if some of you are 
bachelor's, you know, studying, he'll prepare you for what is your next season of life, you know, what job you need to take or marriage or family or, you know, if you're going to have children, um, you know, or if God is um, asking you to move out of your secular job, getting into ministry, he's going to prepare you. It's not going to be all of a sudden, you know, but God uh, prepares us. We will look at how, you know, God takes us to the preparation process. So, you know, he would, uh, the Holy Spirit would reveal things ahead of time. He will show you things so that he can get you ready for the plan and purposes of God. But what should we do? We need to listen. Um, we need to inquire of God, inqu uh, ask God, um, and we need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is uh, telling us. Okay. Now, how many of you listen to Radio City this morning? Anyone here listen to Radio City this morning? Some of you saying, no ways, I don't listen to Radio City. Okay, so none of you listen to Radio City this morning. Um, but did you, did you know that, uh, thank you, Amani, you know, but did you know that Radio City was on all the time? Yeah. Uh, the only thing you didn't do was you didn't tune into Radio City, but Radio City is is online all the time, right? The same thing, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit is trying to bear witness with your spirit, but we need to tune in, uh, you know, to want to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us. So the Holy Spirit is ready to reveal the plan and the purposes of God for our lives, uh, but we need to tune in. We need to be willing to hear and to listen uh, uh, what God is telling us to um, do. Okay, so you need to tune in and you need to say, or we need to tune in and we need to say, God, what are you saying? Uh, what are you saying about my life? What are you saying about the direction in my life? You know, you can also ask God saying, God, is everything okay in my life? Am I doing what you want me to be doing? Uh, you, you know, uh, do you want to bring about any change in my life? And even as you ask all of these questions, it's good to ask God, you know, time and again. Um, sometimes you're wondering what to pray in our uh, prayer times. You can pray all of these things. Say, God, show me what is the seed in my life. What is the gift, the grace that you've given me? What's the function that you've called me to? So you have so many points to pray for. I'm teaching you also uh, some of the prayer points, uh, what to pray. So you can also ask God, you know, God, what are you saying about my life? What is uh, where are you leading me? What's the direction in my life? You know, uh, God, is everything okay in my life? Is there something that you want to change? Or there's some change that you want to bring about? And then even as you ask God these questions, you know, listen, you know, and even as God reveals it, we need to obey and uh, prepare ourselves and get uh, ready to do what, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is leading us, speaking to us and showing us uh, things to come. Okay, uh, let's look at, um, for more insights, to gain more insights, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Can somebody read that, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man mm -hmm. the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God revealed them to us, through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Amen. Thank you. So God has these wonderful, great uh, things that he's prepared for you and me. And the Bible says he reveals them to us. And how does he reveal them to us? He reveals them to us by his um, spirit. So sometimes the leading of the spirit you know, uh, is something that we can not fully understand. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not something that we can explain to others. So somebody says, how did you know that, you know, God is telling you that uh, you're going to, there's going to be a change, you know, you're going to get into a new job, this going to be involved, uh, it's going to involve traveling. And you're saying, you know, I really don't know, but I just sense in my uh, spirit, I can, I can just, un you know, I just knew in my spirit and I was, and I knew for sure. So, you know, uh, how can, uh, you know, we discern uh, when the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, uh, bearing inner witness with our spirit, sometimes it's not fully understandable. Like Jesus says in John chapter 3, verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. Okay. So, you know, you can 
feel the wind blowing on your face, your head, or moving you, or pushing you. You can feel the force of the wind, but you cannot say where the wind is coming from and where it is going. So you cannot explain the dynamics of how the wind, um, uh, you know, is going or everything about the wind. You just know it's it's blowing, and you know it's the wind. So many times, um, the leading of the Holy Spirit is like that. Uh, what I mean is, you know, um, you sense it, you feel it, uh, but you can't explain everything about uh, it, you know. So, um, so when somebody asks you, how did you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you? Um, what were you feeling? So you just say, sorry, you know, I can't explain it, but I just know that the Holy Spirit is bearing witness inside me. I can't explain it, but I know it is um, there, okay? Uh, so we can't explain everything, but we just know, we sense, and we know for sure that it is the Holy Spirit leading us and um, guiding us. Now, how does the Holy Spirit speak to us? There are a few things here, and we will also look at it and study about it in detail when we look at the next publication, um, you know, receiving uh, God's guidance. So one way the Holy Spirit speaks to us is he bears witness in our spirit man. Okay, we can... Just uh, there's a deep in, inner uh, impression. We can just feel the strong, deep inner impression in our hearts. Something inside us is telling us the Holy Spirit is saying, do this, don't do that. This is right. That is wrong. Okay. Um, and sometimes if you don't, exp you're praying about something and you don't experience an inner witness to the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit is basically trying to say, hey, there is no change. Um, there is no change as of now. Uh, that God wants to reveal about your next season. Whatever you're doing, just be faithful, just grow, just progress. Um, uh, so you're, you know, some of you might be saying, you know, I learned, I need to go and ask the Holy Spirit what's the next season, and I'm not getting anything, I'm not sensing anything, there is no inner uh, witness, uh, what should I do? So sometimes there will be no inner witness because then we need to realize that, um, you know, the Holy uh, God wants us to be in this place or in this specific function, um, for some more time, when the right time has come, he will reveal us uh, what is the next season and he will move us and prepare us for the next uh, season, okay? But if there is an inner witness, uh, the Holy Spirit is telling you something to do, then you need to obey it um, and um, do what he says. Sometimes there can be a discomfort inside you when you're praying about something, which means it's a warning sign, don't go there, don't jump into that, uh, that's not the right relationship, that's not a good business partner, uh, that's not the right person to take on your team, or uh, that's not the right place to go, or that's not a specific right function that God wants you to uh, get into, or the right job. So when you experience um, you know, discomfort, when you experience no peace, then it's a warning sign that you need to take okay then secondly there's a quickening of the word of god so you know when you're reading scriptures you know sometimes uh, god speaks to us uh, not sometimes most of the times he speaks to us the scriptures or you know uh, scripture passages or words or phrases can just leap out of uh, the pages of our bible so to say uh, it can be a rhema word that uh, just comes into our spirit it quickens our spirit and god is instructing us through the scripture he's guiding us through scripture to do uh, something or he's telling you what is right and wrong the third thing is, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals um, God's plan and purposes through ideas, impressions, pictures, dreams, and visions. We already saw this, the life of Joseph. Um, uh, also, you know, just through pictures and dreams and visions, the Holy Spirit can uh, reveal uh, the plans and purposes of God. We look at, uh, we we'll study all of this in detail in the next uh, publication. Okay, so the Holy Spirit speaks to us in several ways. Um, and sometimes, you know, it can also come to prophetic words, uh, but we need to, uh, you know, even as the Holy Spirit speaks to us in different ways, we just need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is asking us and leading us and guiding us. Okay, we'll stop here. It's time for our break and uh, we'll come back after the break. Thank you, everyone. See you after the break. <laughs> 